Let me be blunt. Let me be blunt. Too many countries are headed in the wrong direction. Too many countries are headed in the wrong direction. The virus remains public enemy number one. The virus remains public enemy number one. Now, where have we heard that before? Where state power was increased while people lost their freedoms. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. I want to be straight with you. I want to be straight with you. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. I repeat. I repeat. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. See, here's the deal. Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedoms. It's the argument of tyrants. It's the creed of slaves. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. It is the conservative and Democrats are the death cult. Now, I found this incredibly interesting. This Smirconish guy on CNN articulated the very fallacy that's promoted every single day on his communist news network. And he did it very, very well, only he didn't pin it on himself, of course, because if he did, he would have lost his job. But I want to show you this. This is very interesting. I, I think you guys will find this fascinating too. I'm pretty sure. Listen to this. Does perception match reality? I'm Michael Smirkanish in Philadelphia. That's a freaking good question, man. Does perception match reality? And keep in mind, he is working. He's an employee for the Communist News Network, the Counterfeit News Network. And the Counterfeit News Network, which is the military, the, the propaganda arm of the military industrial complex, truly, and the comedy arm the entertainment arm of the military industrial complex of the Zionist international bankers. Does perception match reality? Communist news network, MSLSD, ABC, CBS, the uh, Fox news. They're constantly putting out a perception to mask reality. That is their goal. That is their agenda. They don't state it in those exact words, but you can see it with every single broadcast. They're there to distract, deceive, and divide the masses. And he's part of this organization. But listen to what he says. You know, every once in a while, truth will make an appearance on mainstream media. And when it does, it's classic because the irony couldn't be greater in what he says. It's tough to watch the news. Last weekend, 15 people shot at a funeral in Chicago. Then three fishing buddies shot to death in Florida. In Atlanta, New Orleans, Washington, other cities, shooting victims have included children. For example, on July 12 in Brooklyn, a one-year-old boy killed by gunfire in his stroller while picnicking with his family. And of course, for 58 straight nights, there's been protesting, sometimes violence, rioting and looting in 16 square blocks of downtown Portland. The conflict between law enforcement and the protesters is not letting up. Last night, federal troops again clashed with thousands of Portland protesters. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the city's mayor got caught up in the fray and was among those who were tear gassed. Three hours north in Seattle, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, or CHAZ, was cleared July 1st after a series of violent events, including the death of a teenager. And of course, Seattle and Portland followed Minneapolis, where the killing of George Floyd sparked days of tumult and protests, both peaceful and violent, across the country. Perhaps it's no wonder, then, that President Trump has sought to portray himself as the thin blue line that separates order from anarchy. At yesterday's presser, White House press... As though anarchy can't be orderly? Anarchy is just... Guys, let, let's just put this to rest right now. Anarchy, etymologically speaking, I don't care what Merriam-Webster says, the etymological framework of anarchy limits the definition to without rulers. That's all it means. It does not mean chaos, blood in the streets, Molotov cocktails, broken glass, flipped over cars. It doesn't mean any of that. 
It doesn't mean disorder. It doesn't mean order. It just means without rulers. That's all it means. So when they try to juxtapose peace and order against anarchy, they're completely being disingenuous. There's no journalistic integrity in that. And, you know, people are people could say say to me, well, you're being you're being really semantical. It's just all a matter of semantics. No, it actually isn't. Words have meaning. And if we're going to use words and these words are vehicles of thought and those thoughts that turn into audible, you know, waves, wavelengths that go into your ears and then your brain processes it. So there's understanding. We have to be in agreement on what these words mean. You can't just start co-opting words and shoving definitions that don't belong to them. Anarchy simply means, and an anarchist, anarchy means without rulers. So an anarchist is one who wants to live without rulers. That's it. That's it. That's all it means. It's not, it's not tantamount to chaos by any stretch of the imagination. You can't force that in there. And if people try to, like Smirconis just did, and like Donald Trump does, and like Fox News does, we've heard that. You know how many times I've heard the word anarchy and anarchists refer to people who are uh, wreaking havoc in the streets just in the last week? I, I can't even count. Well over 10. Well over 10. Every time you turn around, you constantly hear that. Secretary Kayleigh McEnany played a video so full of violence that Fox News execs decided to pull away. These are not the actions of so-called peaceful protesters, and the Trump administration will not stand by and allow anarchy in our streets. Law and order will prevail, and I have a... We will not allow anarchy in our streets. What she's really saying is we will not allow no rulers in our streets. We, we got to have rulers. Got to have the rulers. I know she's not meaning it like that, but gosh, it's just, it's laughable, man short video for you because I want it to be real uh, what is happening right now in Portland. So if we could play that video, that'd be great. All right. Did you see that? They literally played all of three max four seconds of a clip and Fox News interrupted and said that was too much. I didn't see anything on the screen that warranted going to a commercial break or cutting her off. It's kind of weird. It's really weird. Uh, we were not expecting that video, and um, our management here at Fox News has decided we will pull away from that at this time. Wow, she got the she got the memo on that quick. What the heck? <laughs> what is, was there a time delay? How could there be that much of an information transfer to where she can? You know, I know they got those things in their ears and they can get it like that, but give me a break, man. We're talking about a total elapsed time of playing the set, the 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 video that McEnany played for three or four seconds, and then her coming on, all, at, all of it took place in under 10 seconds. Wonder what's up with that. Fox's daytime programming decision at odds with nighttime programming, which seems to play imagery of mayhem on a loop. Seeking to capitalize on this perception of chaos, the Trump campaign spent- Seeking to capitalize on this perception of chaos? Guys, every network's doing that. They're trying to pin that against Fox. If you look at CNN, just go, just go to the CNN library on their YouTube videos. They're trying to capitalize and cash in on chaos as well. Give me the, the hypocrisy is immense from Smirconis. But wait, there's more. We, we haven't even arrived at what I'm going to take a look at. This is mind blowing. $550,000 in just the first two days of the week on a new ad. It shows an elderly woman who calls police in response to a home invader then drops her phone before anybody answers an early i actually wanted to cover that that trump uh ad because it was ridiculous what what they should have done was hey you want to you want help empower yourself don't call 911 call 1911 call 357 call glock 40. your version of that spot shows a split screen depicting violence on one side and an empty 911 call center on the other the claim is that Joe Biden will bring about this end. The tagline, you won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. It's all disconcerting to watch, right? And it would... You won't be safe in Joe Biden's America as Donald Trump's America burns to the ground. It would be easy to conclude that we're living in a terribly dangerous time. But does perception match reality? Frankly, I don't know. Consider this story from the Oregonian titled... Fed's right-wing media paint Portland as city under siege. A tour of town shows otherwise. It says that many Portlanders... 
Now, this is interesting in light of what Jesse555 just posted in the chat room. He said, I went to downtown Portland and it's not near as bad as Fox is making it out to be, which is what Samar Khanish is saying, this report is saying right here. Announced the national media's coverage of the city's protests, claiming that while graffiti is typical and occasional clashes with police do occur, stories of violence are exaggerated. No doubt there has been an uptick in street violence and rioting in certain cities, as we're having a necessary conversation about social justice and doing so in the midst of a pandemic. And by the way, I've got zero tolerance for any of the mayhem that I've seen depicted, and I believe that local law enforcement needs to take control. But is the perception of widespread lawlessness supported by the data? The portrayal of violence on the streets of America in the summer of 2020 makes me wonder if we're witnessing a replay of the summer of 2001. Okay, here is where I wanted to drill down to. Listen to this. Listen to the words of Samar Khanish. Think about what CNN and MSLSD and Fox News, think about what they all do because he's trying to pin this completely at the doorstep of Fox when his network is guilty of this every single day, every single broadcasting day, and twenty four hour, every 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week news cycle. Check this out. You remember? The summer of the shark. It all began on July 6th when eight-year-old Jesse Arbogast had his arm ripped off by a shark. From then on, every incident involving the frightening fish, no matter the severity, was covered and scrutinized. George Burgess, the director of the International Shark Attack File, says he received three times the typical number of media inquiries that summer. So they highlight limited cases that were always there anyway but they put it on every single 24 hour a day, seven day a week news cycle, and they make you think, oh my God, there's, there's these, this massive amount of shark attacks when the number hasn't gone up at all. As a matter of fact, the number that they're gonna, he's gonna show in a second decreased, but this is a perfect encapsulation and explanation of what they're doing with COVID-19, what CNN's doing, what Fox News is doing, what MSNBC's doing, ABC, all the networks are doing this. They're taking all these cases and they're adding to the caseload from other deaths. You know, people are still dying from other things. At the same time, this CV-19 thing is happening, but the CV-19 people, the Johns Hopkins University of Fear Porn Death Map people, are grabbing all these numbers right here and bringing them over to their pile. So the overall death rate isn't going up, but the CV-19 death rate is going up, and we can see that every single night, when you turn on your TVs in the upper right-hand corner, they give you the confirmation case count. They give you the death count. They give you the death count for the United States and for the entire world. And people are so fearful. And Smirconish is blowing the whistle on this, but he's not implicating himself. He actually is implicating himself, but he's not saying that it's applying to him. This is classic. This is, this is classic. Totaling 900. It was all that anybody could talk about until the tragic events of September 11 knock the shark out of the news. In and what do you think is going to happen after CV-19? They're going to have another crisis that they can't let go to waste. And they're going to utilize that crisis and manipulate the people in the crisis and fulfill their Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution. We got a problem. What's the problem? Oh, there's this shark attack. Yeah, but it's always been there. Okay, but let's hyperinflate the, the, the storytelling of it. And let's, let's put a different story every night and show that pe the people, to give the impression, the perception, that there are more shark attacks happening than are actually happening. So your perception is painted and you think that's the reality when indeed it is not. So you got the problem. You create a fear-based reaction out of the people because now people are afraid to go into the water. Now people are, you know, they're, they're not going to visit the beaches and they're not going to book that hotel room and they're not going to take that vacation because, oh my God, all these people are dying of sharks and they adjust their behavior. And that's just for sharks. Now people are adjusting their behavior by wearing masks and social distancing and washing their hands 50 times a day and listening to the authorities and waiting for Mr. Bill and Melinda Gates, Gill and Melinda Bates, uh, to, to deliver that, that much needed vaccine because they're the saviors of the world. And that's all you hear about it. But that's just your perception of what's going on. That's not reality. So Smirconish is here blowing the whistle on what mainstream media, including his own network, does every single day. This is classic, man. In the end, the total number of attacks that year, 76 worldwide, nine fewer than the year before. The number of shark-related fatalities actually decreased that year, going from 12 in the year 2000 to 5 in 2001. 
Or you could think about last year, when reports of American deaths in the Dominican Republic led to terrifying headlines, conspiracy theories, and a crash in tourism to the country. When 10 Americans died in the DR between January and June of 2019, some from natural causes, some maybe not. If you look at the raw numbers, these deaths, while tragic, are not out of the ordinary. According to the State Department, 13 Americans died in the DR in 2018. That's from non-natural causes, meaning the actual number could be higher. In 2017, the State Department said that 17 Americans died on the island from non-natural causes. While there may be suspicious circumstances around some of those deaths, the State Department released a statement, and it said this, We do not publish statistics regarding natural deaths abroad. However, Speaking generally, over 2.7 million U.S. citizens visit the Dominican Republic each year, and we have not seen an uptick in the number of U.S. citizen deaths reported to the department. Bottom line is this. Despite the hysteria, American deaths in the DR were not on the rise last year. And my point is, we need to make sure our perceptions are based on statistics and not on stories. And the stats that will matter most won't be out until next year. He just pointed the finger at himself and his network for the very thing that they do all the time. They take this little mi microscopic thing and then they blow it up and they expand it and they exaggerate it and they put it in the news every single night and people get freaked out about it when there's nothing at all to be freaked out about. It's all perception. It has nothing to do th with reality. I did a video one time um, about redheads and how you can, you can take one story every single day and fill the news cycles 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 365 days a year for about 10 years for redheads who abuse animals. And you can make redheads sound like absolute monsters. That's just one example. You can make brunettes, you know, whatever. Uh, you could choose the skin color or whatever. And you can make people look like monsters when nothing could be further from the truth. This is just how certain of these people act. Brunettes do the same thing. You, 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 just because you have red hair doesn't have to do with you. This, this redhead over here kicking a dog or throwing a cat in a bag and throwing him out on the freeway. But you can, you can hyperinflate and overexpose and hypersensationalize something to the point where people think it's an absolute epidemic. Now, every time they see a redhead, they're like, he's got to be an animal abuser. So it paints your perception, and then it paints reality, and then it, it, it dicks, your mind starts dictating how you're going to act and respond to all that perception painting that mainstream media did. There's power in the media, guys. There is power in the media. So Smirkanish actually pointed the finger at themselves for the very thing they're doing with the COVID-19 death, death map numbers. Amazing stuff, man. If you get something out of this content and you want to support this channel, one of the best ways you can do that is by liking this video and sharing it with everybody you can, everywhere you can on social media. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon so that whenever I upload a video, you're one of the first to see it. If you want to further support the channel, the Patreon, PayPal, Bitcoin, and Subscribestar links are in the description below and in the pinned comment. Or you can grab one of these conversation starting, hard hitting designs that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, or mug from the shirt store. And that link is also in the description. Your purchase helps support more content on this channel. I will see you guys in the next heavily censored, shadow banned, and now 100% demonetized video.